Hey, Connor. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I figure I call you. I'm in like a sardine can right now. I don't get very good reception here. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah I figure I call you on FaceTime audio. But uh, yeah, man, tell me what's going on. I've been on, been on Twitter a, a lot over the weekend, and those guys are fucking throwing around crazy shit. Yeah, it's uh, it's contagion, is you know, and it's never been easier to uh, to move your money, and so like a run on a bank isn't like necessarily lining up outside it's just like logging into your smartphone and moving your money yeah yeah um, so from for where you stand as far as fannie mae and freddie mac um we got an email this morning that said freddie mac and fannie mae are open for business with the <laughs> events of last week and this weekend the markets are moving quickly um They said part of Fannie and Freddie's mission is to provide liquidity throughout all cycles of the market. And this is no exception. They have confirmed this position with us today. So interesting. So Fannie and Freddie are government sponsored entities. Even when like everything shuts down, it's supposed to be Fannie and Freddie that still lend money. Okay. So they're still in the market. The treasuries are down, you know, 60 bips. Yeah. And so it's not, you know, uh, basis point for basis point, but um, because there is some kind of credit market turmoil, so spreads have widened about 15 bips, but you're still going to overall be a lot lower. Interesting. So when you called me, um, I had already followed up Friday. Um, I was just sending off another email to my Fanny team. I'm sure they're they're slammed, but I should be higher up in the queue than everybody else. Um, so I'm just trying to get an updated quote. Okay. Uh, it's obviously, it, yeah. if I got some Friday, it would be pointless today anyway. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're down, the tenure's at 353. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, yeah, that's crazy. So, um, you know, I'm not going to, I guess I could take a stab at it. Um, what would you What would you guess that they would be quoting at right now? Maybe 215 over. You'd maybe be at like 5.65. Okay. Better than it was. I mean, yeah. we, were, we were probably at like silver six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, what do you, what's your take on, you know, obviously you guys being, you know, real estate lending juggernauts and you guys are even in California and you're, you know, yeah. you're at least closer to this whole, you know, Silicon Valley thing going on. Like, what's your whole take on this? What's your whole take on people calling for like, like, dude, I, I've been reading shit where people are like, this is the start. Like, we're gonna see commercial real estate. Like, you're, you're, if you own commercial real estate, you're, you're a, a fool, and you know all, all this. Like, like straight up, man. Like, I'm saying, like, I'm seeing, like, and, and not even like, <clears throat> and I'm talking about like economists are saying, like, you know, you get both sides, right? But I, I'd love your take on, you know, you being so, you know, such an intricate player in real estate and lending and, you know, tied to the feds and tied, yeah. to, you know, you know, all this stuff, like what's your whole take on this whole, you know, doomsday, uh, real estate scenario because of all of the, you know, this whole bubble and like now, now banks are failing. Like what's your, what's your take on all of this? Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually share a parking lot with uh Tory Pines bank, which oh. is part of Western Alliance. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not familiar with that. Who like give me a little yeah, bit so of there, update you, on that? If you follow, um, if you just turn on like CNBC or any of the things like so, Silicon Valley Bank failed, Signature Bank failed over the weekend, and then like First Republic, who I just closed some loans with, is down like 75 <laughs> percent. Yeah. Today and Western Alliance, which is the oh, bank okay. that we share a parking lot with. Oh, Western Alliance. Too. Oh, the bank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we're we're very close to it. So you know, I think. I think the, the government stepping in and saying, hey, all of the depositors at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank are going to be made whole, even you know if it's outside of 250000 yeah, uh, or above 250000 I think hopefully calmer heads will prevail and you don't see you know people – because what will happen is people will go to these banks that are down, they'll take their money out, and then they'll become insolvent, and then they'll fail. But if they know that, hey, the government can step in and, um, you know, back them up, there's not a need for them to move the money out. And yeah. banks necessarily have to sell those, like, you know, long-term bonds that are they're losing money on 
Um, so from a commercial real estate point of view, um, you know, I, I think the banks that got in trouble, Sil- Silicon Valley Bank was more venture capital based. Yeah. They barely did any commercial real estate. Signature Bank in New York did a lot of real did a lot of uh, commercial real estate, but they were like crypto. They were, you know, more open to crypto. So it's kind of like these niche parts of the market. Okay. Um, I think if you see like a, you know, you, you, we kind of got to watch the next like 24, 48 hours and see if like First Republic, Western Alliance, Pacific Western, um, or even like a Charles Schwab, you know, start needing a buyer or something like that. Like Interesting. Like someone to step in. Um, but you know, I think with overall multifamily people need places to live, um, retail, there's leases in place. People are still, you know, shopping. I don't think that's going anywhere. Industrial's not going anywhere. Office is going to shit, Yeah. but you're not looking to buy, you know, office buildings. I think ultimately, you know, people need, you know, places yeah. to live. If, you, if you're getting a deal at a good basis, that's not going anywhere. This, I think the safest asset is is apartments especially sure. in like the, the west because you know we're so supply constrained um that that's uh, my argument right how, how can you how can you call for like blood in the streets with you know commercial real estate and when i say commercial real estate we, we refer to commercial real estate up here in canada as like multifamily. i don't know if it's yeah. is, is yeah, that same. yeah yeah okay so um, you know, how can you call for blood in the streets with respect to commercial real estate when there's, there's, there's a lack of supply? I mean, it's, I, I don't understand. Like, it's obviously, it's obviously keeping it from crashing because there's simply like, it's simple supply and demand economics. I don't, I don't get what, yeah. so for me, it's like, it, I, I, I like to make real estate a little bit. I like to simplify it a little bit more. And everybody's like throwing all of these fucking graphs everywhere and look at this. And like, and I'm just like, guys, like there's immigration coming into these countries like crazy. Right. And there's nowhere for them to live. There's nowhere for even the, the, the population that currently exists to live. There's, there's a, you know, you know, lack of supply, huge demand still, it's as simple as that in my, in my opinion. Right. But I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, right. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I think it's a safe asset to be in. Obviously, you know, people are worried about like their money market funds and, um, you know, <laughs> cash seems to be like freaking everybody out. <laughs> yeah. If you invest in real assets like real estate. I mean, you're, it, it's obviously more secure than, you know, three days ago none of these banks have failed. Everyone thinks everything's fine. And then all of a sudden we're like, you know, people are lining up outside banks to move their money. <laughs> Is that actually yes. happening? Cause I've seen some pictures and then I've seen other people post pictures like, okay, nobody's lining up. It's fake. Yeah. I drove by uh Tory Pines bank. Um, uh, eight fifty six this morning. There was one guy in line. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So you think the Fed's coming in and saying, "Hey, listen, we're gonna, we're not. What, what, what's the, what's the terminology that's actually happening? It's not a bailout. What, are, what are they actually doing? They're just kind of a backstop. I'm actually gonna look at in the parking lot right now and see if there's anybody. No. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So they're what they're doing. They're not bailing out the bank like they did in '08. Yeah. Um. You know, back then they they stepped in and you know saved saved them yeah um, but so they're letting them fail so all the stockholders all the bond holders that like you know are were invested in those banks are gonna lose their lose their money but all the banks pay into fdic yeah um and they have a fund that they're going to use to make sure that no matter what dollar amount you had in the bank if you were a depositor gets made whole okay because they insure to up to two hundred fifty thousand per person yeah um so if you have you know two people on an account it's 500 but anything above that's technically not not secured but they stepped in over the weekend and were like yeah everyone is gonna you know they're creating a backstop basically to, got it yeah and so that hopefully you know if they didn't do that then it'd be like oh who's the next bank to fail and you just have everybody making a run you'll have a you know, bunch of bank failures. Yeah. Um, but I, I heard it, I read an interesting article. I'll send it to you. That's like, you know, I don't know if this, this could be the end of the rate hikes 
because you know what are they going to do keep hiking rates and then putting banks in more and more you know yeah. perilous situations and yeah so what like what's the goal you can't also you know hike the rates and then make the banks fail um yeah, I'll so, send it to you. It's, yeah, it's interesting. So, so what's so what's the deal if they stop uh, if they stop hiking rates, inflation keeps going. Is that is that simply like are we looking at you know new new inflation at the new normal is going to be five six percent perpetually? You know, right. I think, I, I think they think that you know this is going to shock the system a little bit and inflation will come down. Oh, okay. They're not going to you know it's uh, jobs and spending and you know this could be a, a pretty big shock to the system. Interesting. Um, Hmm. that that kind of puts you know pauses people from going out and spending and jobs from hiring you know because there's a little bit of Friday, fear all these tech companies thought they couldn't make payroll because they couldn't access the money in their accounts like roku um the you know streaming yeah. device thing had like 500 million dollars in cash at silicon valley bank <laughs> like they would have failed wow you know? so <laughs> it's so crazy. It's like this, it's like this house of cards. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm, and what's crazy too is how people can. I don't, I don't see why people are talking about you want to be liquid in this kind of scenario. If anything, I don't want to be liquid. I want to, yeah. I want to put my, I want to put my money in tangible assets. I don't understand yeah. what the reasoning behind someone wanting to have cash and liquidity right now is is an advantage I, I don't i don't see that i mean maybe if the market starts crashing but i mean let's be honest you know i, I don't know how many investors you know i got to read their quotes where they they mention that you know you lose way more money trying to predict the market than the uh yeah. the, than the collapse itself right so yeah. so i don't see where people are going with that I, I think it's a bunch of like these fucking crystal ball guys that think they know what they're, what's going on right but yeah. uh I, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see why I'd want to, you can't, I don't, I don't see that. Like you said, like everybody needs a place to live. Like yeah. real estate's not going anywhere. It's a necessity. So I, it doesn't make sense to me when these guys are like, Oh no, you want to buy this and you want to buy that. Even fucking precious metals. I don't see the advantage of precious, precious metals. Yeah. You can't leverage them. Number one. Yeah. And then, and then it's as simple as, you know, Oh, Hey, the miners can just turn on the floodgates if they want. Right. Like they just control the market, so I don't, I don't. You, you can't just like turn the floodgates on building houses. You just, yeah, you, you so can't do that, right? Time. Yep. So it takes a long time, and yeah. unless, yeah, and out migration takes a long time too. Like if people are moving from these kind of higher, higher cost, you know, low supply markets to like, you know, the middle of nowhere or markets with more supply, more affordable, it takes time. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, all the red um, tape that all these bigger cities yeah. have and everything and all the zoning restrictions and permitting. Like it's, it's, this isn't like, yeah, I, this isn't like, uh, you, you know, let's just buy some gold. Like I, it doesn't make yeah. sense to me. It, it, I don't, I don't want to be in that kind of position. I'd rather be in real estate in the worst economic times. I'd rather own some land and some brick yeah. and mortar. Like it, that, that's, that's yeah. me, but you know, who knows? But, uh, Okay, interesting, man. Well, let me know. Let me know what Fanny comes back with because yeah. this is kind of this is kind of interesting. I mean, what's your what's your long term? Not even long term. Like, what's your like? I don't even know. Seventy two hour, like a week. Like, you you think that this is gonna stick, or do you think that this is gonna like? I can't see this being like. Do you think these rates are gonna hold? Like, like yeah. you think so? You know, at least for this week, I think with the volatility. Um, I think they're going to stay around where they're at. Really? Eh? Low. Really? Eh? So, so yeah. let me ask you this. So say for example, if I, if I, if I play these guys a little bit and I say, listen, there's way too much volatility, you know, if I play into that whole, the whole yeah. fear game, right. To these guys. And I'm going to say like, listen, I need this reduction or I'm going to kill the deal because tomorrow's my, the, the cutoff for the extension that I have. So yeah. if I go in at a reduction, we get the decent rate. Can I rate lock now in, in hopes to keep that rate? I mean, I know, I, are there like any kind of exceptions? Because I know you were mentioning I, I can only rate lock after the appraisal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that, nothing, eh? No. Fuck. Not with Fanny. Um, with Freddie, you can, but their, their rates aren't reactive with the market. So unless I get something from Freddie today saying the, the rates of, um, you know, dropped X, X amount because Freddie, you can lock, but Freddie's rates went up again last week. They, sh they will be coming down, but they don't do it immediately. And they're not like market, like they're not right with the market like Fanny is. Okay. 
So I'll keep you posted on what they come back with. But yeah, we we kind of have to float it out for like two weeks. Fuck eh? Um, okay. So it's a little bit of a gamble then. Yeah, but you you know with this going on, you can definitely get. You know, I, I'm hoping you can get some. You know, pricing breaks because of the volatility, and tell them you know. Here's here's the number, and this is the reason why you know markets upside down. Fannie yeah. Freddie are still lending, but you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing yeah, like, big, and Fanny Fanny won't do like anything, eh? Like even a rate, like they there's like no exceptions even. They do they do a rate lock, but it's only for like um, repeat. Like we've already rented yeah. credit. You know, if this was your second deal, we could rate lock, but they they have to do all that stuff, and they don't rate lock before. Shit, that'd yeah. be so good if they did. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Fuck. Okay. It's just the- all right, well, let me know, and um, let me know what they come back with, and I'll go back to them, and with the quote today that you get on yeah. uh, on proceeds, I'll go back to them at, like, the, they're, they're, they're not going higher than a 65, right? So they're going to go 65 max? Yeah. So I'll go yeah. 65 max with these guys and see what they say. Okay. Um, how, how do you feel about the whole, uh, uh, um, you know, the concessions burning off and, and they, I think they got, I think you said, you mentioned that they have to, for us to like, for this decent, for this deal to look decent, they have to come in at like gross rent above, uh, not gross rent, but net rent, uh, above 32,000 per were, month. They were close to that. Okay. Um, is that, is that 30, is a 32, uh, number, does that get you the, your 10% economic vacancy? Is that what you're shooting for? Is that what that number was? Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. Because um, they just have the two vacancies, and now they didn't have any. Yeah, we we're at thirty-one four. Oh, maybe um, I was maybe I was reading the maybe I was referring to the the gross rent. I don't know if, why I was thinking thirty-three. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're at like eleven and a half percent, so it's close enough. Okay. But it's gotten a little better, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. I'll still, I'll still, honestly, I'll probably still underwrite it at 6% because, like, who the fuck knows what's going to happen in two weeks? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks, Connor. All right. Goodbye.